Do you buy games at launch, or do you wait for sales? Is it situational, or is there a principle you follow no matter what? What reasons are there to pick one instance over the other? Game buying can be a complex business. Here's what I do. If I don't buy a game the day it launches, I'm waiting till it's half off. That's my new modus operandi. Because think about the reasons why you buy a game at launch, if you do. Reason 1. It's a great game you're really excited for and you literally cannot wait to play it. People will pay through the nose to get the thing they want as early as possible. Express or overnight shipping, full price launches, and sometimes exclusive early access rights for pre-ordering deluxe editions. Patience is a virtue, but it's also a money saver, as it should be, because you should be rewarded for toughing out an extra two or three months of not playing the game you want before it goes on sale. Personally, I can't imagine doing that for games I'm truly excited for, but sometimes other people don't have a choice, either because they're too busy or their finances won't allow it. Of course, as a kid, none of our finances allowed it. We always had to wait for games. Maybe some of you had yes moms or sure dads who bought you whatever game at the drop of the hat, or you had an allowance because you lived in a magical Disney dream world the rest of us could only fantasize about. But I feel like most kids got games on birthdays and Christmas, with maybe a tiny smattering of scenarios where begging in the electronic section of a Fred Meyer actually worked. That one's for all you Pacific Northwesterners out there. It helped being a kid, though, because I didn't know what games were even coming out. I didn't even start following release schedules till I was like 18. As a kid, going to Best Buy was my E3. That was my summer game fest. Just looking at the shelves like, they made a third Sly Cooper game? Yeah, two years ago, buddy, you live under a damn rock. I never had to wait for launch days, I just went snorkeling in the bargain bin like bobbin for apples. Dad, look! My soon-to-be favorite game is three dollars because it launched half a decade ago and they already made a new console I never heard of. Simpler times, but obviously we missed out without realizing it. Reason two for buying games at launch, which is a lot more prevalent nowadays, is the community behind it. If it's a multiplayer game, the reason writes itself. You get in on the ground floor when everyone's noon, you stand a much better chance of not getting rolled in every match. Buying a multiplayer game six months later is like signing up for AP Calculus as a fourth grader. Everyone else has read a little further in the book than you. Your peers are out here discussing trigonometry and you're like, <laughs> yeah, and what's the deal with negative numbers? Like, just look on the bright side or something. But even outside of multiplayer, people buy games at launch and they watch story beats together. They engage in memory. They bond over shared experiences simultaneously. Sometimes I'll look at a launch day Twitter trend of a game I'm not interested in, and I'm still like, damn. It's like you're a kid watching other kids playing in the park, out your passenger side window as your mom's driving you to the hospital, like, oh man, they look like they're having fun. Well, time for my invasive surgery. The social element is a big reason for a lot of people. I've had this happen where I wasn't sure about whether I wanted a game on launch day, and then like three days later, maybe I see gameplay or something, and I decide I do want to buy it, but then I'm like, Oh, well, I already missed out, so I might as well just wait for a sale. Like, is that much of a factor, even against my own wishes? I just feel like if you buy a game at full price on week two, you're wasting money. Like, you already waited. You're late, and you got left out, and you still want to pay full price? The moment passed. It's no longer a trend. That doesn't mean the game isn't still good, but it's like the difference between watching a sporting event or an esports tournament in real time or watching it later when everyone's already done talking about it. If I don't catch a Smash tournament in real time as it's happening, my enthusiasm is sapped and I don't give a shit anymore. I don't want to watch a VOD. Are you joking? There's no electricity in the air in a damn VOD. I don't care how hype the action is. It's a relic of the past now. It's recorded history. And I don't know if you've ever been in school before, but history is boring. If I buy a game on sale, the moment is still passed, but the price reflects that, so it's fine. I'm paying for less of an experience than I would have got at launch, and if it's a game you weren't that hyped for to begin with, there's nothing lost, so of course you wait for a sale on it. On the flip side, sometimes games give you like 24 hours or 3 days of early access if you pre-order a deluxe edition or something, and I think that should be more common. I would absolutely spend 10 more dollars to get Pokemon Violet 3 days early, and it sounds backwards because of what I just said about the social aspect, but playing before everyone else is literally the complete opposite of playing after everyone else. It's like you're in an exclusive club. You're a VIP. They bring you your game on a silver platter with a bottle of champagne, and you politely ask for vodka and a shot glass instead. Now everyone else is the loser waiting for their turn, and you're out here living the life of early luxury. Unfortunately, this rarely happens, and I've never seen it on a game I actually wanted until now. Hogwarts Legacy is doing 72 hours early access for people who get the deluxe, and when I saw that, I got so excited I immediately had to poop. Side note, 
That happens to other people too, right? If I'm out here reading gaming news and I see something that gets me hype, I usually have to quit halfway through the article and go say hi to John. My colon can't handle excitement. Like, I understand why some dogs pee a little whenever they see somebody, because my ass is a Great Dane when it comes to the gaming industry. But anyway, that's good value to me. You still get the social aspect, because a lot of the other people are going to do that too, especially for a game repping a franchise with that rabbit of fan base, and you get to watch everybody else be jealous and log off Twitter for three days to avoid spoilers. But there's an even more exclusive club, one that only game journalists, celebrities doing brand deals, and popular YouTubers, or YouTubers who trick PR agencies into thinking they're more popular than they are, have access to. The Review Code. Now that is a feeling like no other. Now you may be thinking, oh, Sunburned Albino, you're the absolute pinnacle of a gamer personality. Surely you receive tens of emails daily from the publishers of big AAA titles begging to send you their game two weeks out from release to make whatever content you want with it. Uh, but you are shockingly mistaken, because I only get about five emails per day, and 99% of them are for garbage shovelware that gets mixed reviews on Steam and fizzles immediately. I can count on one hand the amount of games I looked at that turned out to be anything. Crown Trick was pretty decent, Coromon was neat, Backpack Hero was a banger, and that's all I can remember that were unsolicited off the top of my head. But, as a YouTuber who can only brag about very specific aspects of his channel, if I ever decide to email publishers or PR agencies about early codes myself, my success rate is what we in the business call abysmal. I've tried it about a dozen times in the last four-ish years, and it's only worked once. Was it God of War? Was it Sekiro? Was it Kingdom Hearts 3? No, it was The Sinking City. Which I'll have you know is a pretty good game, actually. Open world case solving game with a side of Cthulhu based horror, but it's not like a huge deal. I got it a week and a half early, and let me tell you, as a YouTuber, you never forget your first early game. Like, I thought I made it out here when they actually sent me the code. I was like, wait, what? You know I'm not popular outside my boss rankings, right? And this game don't have any. Of course, I didn't actually say that. I was like, thank you, this is most expected and deserved, and I'm gonna make your game famous. It was funny because the pre-launch build had a shitload of technical problems, most egregious of which was the fact that it literally took maybe 10 full seconds to open the map every time you wanted to open the map, which in an open world game you can imagine really cut into the proceedings. So I had to play the whole game like that, and then the game comes out, they patch it, everything's fine now, but I get to be like, damn, I'm one of the only people on the planet that got to see this game that unpolished. I felt like an insider. Nowadays, I only try to get games early if there's boss ranking potential. Like, the gig is for reviews, so I do promise to do that too, and I would, but like, I definitely sent one out to the God of War Ragnarok people, because it would be nice if I could just have a boss ranking ready-made for launch day instead of having a binge play for 20 hours straight and then speedrun a script just to be even halfway timely. My Valkyrie ranking video has been stealthily going off too. I hit a million views a while ago without even noticing. So the God of War videos have precedent and could really make something happen out here in a similar way to Elden Ring. I don't expect a response though. If publishers aren't gonna do it, they usually just don't reply instead of writing back, subject line, no. But back to the initial topic, launch day versus sales. When is a sale worth it? If a game's been out a month and it goes on sale for 10% off, I ain't about it. I don't know why they even bother. I won't get out of bed for less than 50. Honestly, once you go on sale, just stay there. Like, why are you gonna go 30% off for two weeks and then act like nothing ever happened? Who's buying you the day after the sale ends? You get two weeks of increased sales and you're like, alright, put it back, I'm sick of these profits, let's make ourselves unjustifiable again. I know putting a deadline on it gives people FOMO and makes them more likely to buy it if they think timer's running out on a deal, but then you should just say there's a deadline and then never actually change the price. Just extend the timer by 24 hours every day and fool people who weren't paying attention. Sale ends October 27th. October 27th rolls around. Sale ends October 28th. You'll accomplish a two-pronged goal of increasing sales and making people think they've gone insane. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can like, share, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at sunburnedalbino. Watch all my videos on launch day instead of waiting for a sale, and I'll see you guys next time.